cannabis, marijuana, pot, reefer, grass, ganja, dope, Mary Jane, weed, and we need to stop using so many synonyms for the same thing. We all know what it is, most know what it does, but a few know where it started and how it came to be. This and more on this episode of The earliest found traces of cultivation of cannabis have been uncovered in Japan, more specifically in an archaeological site in the Hoki Islands dating around 8000 BC, which the finders argue that it was probably being used as a food source or maybe even as a psychoactive chemical. Around 3000 years later, hemp imprints were found on ancient pottery in nearby China, and even later on the Chinese used hemp to make shoes, clothes, ropes and an early form of paper. While in nearby Korea, it used to be an important crop, with samples of hemp fabric being discovered as early as 3000 BC. The first documented case of its use dates back to 2800 BC, when it was listed in the Emperor Shen Nung's, regarded as the father of Chinese medicine, pharmacopoeia. In the Hindu world, cannabis takes a more religious tone. It is believed that the deity Shiva has a favorite food, and that is none other than cannabis itself. Ancient Hindu texts attribute the onset of fever with the hot breath of the gods, who were angered by the afflicted person's behavior. Using cannabis in religious rites appeased the gods and hence reduced the fever, which coincidentally is correct since the THC of cannabis acts on the hypothalamus, which in turn reduces the body temperature. This plant was not a stranger to the ancient Assyrians too, who probably used it as an aromatic. They called it Kunabu and Kunubu, a highly probable precursor of the modern name we know it by today, Cannabis. In Europe it is known that the Thracian, Dacian and Scythian shamans burned cannabis flowers to induce a trance state. Hindu travelers spread cannabis in southern Africa, while in the Middle East the Persians are to be thanked for the same job. Hashish, the compressed form of cannabis, is recorded to have been used by Egyptian Sufis around this time. Later on in the timeline, Napoleon Bonaparte invades Egypt in 1798. And Egypt, being a Muslim country, alcohol was almost non-existent there. And so his soldiers, having no alcohol for consumption, started to use the local hashish, which they really liked. Now Napoleon's soldiers proved proved to be the kind of people who aren't the pleasant sort when high off their rocks and they went on mistreating the Egyptian locals. One general, Jacques François Menou, who was married to an Egyptian woman, was appalled by his troops' actions and issued an army-wide warning to act as French and not as barbarians, blaming the hashish intoxication in the process. The warning fell on deaf ears, but General Jacques Francois was having none of it and went on issuing a ban on the production, distribution and consumption of hashish LD style. It's important to notice that Jacques Francois converted to Islam during the Egyptian campaign. He honestly tried to form a bridge between the French and the Egyptians. He even changed his name to Abdallah de Menou and was well connected to the Sunni elite of the time who saw hashish consumption as Haram! By the late 1800s, cannabis recreational use had become increasingly mainstream in the West. Around this time, Egypt, many of the British colonies, Greece, DC of the United States introduced some forms of restrictions on cannabis use. And a few decades later, the United States in 1937 passed the Marijuana Tax Act. It prohibited production of cannabis and even hemp. Some scholars argue that this law came into being to destroy the US hemp industry. However, things changed during World War II. The cheap and relatively low maintenance production of hemp was needed to produce uniforms, canvas and rope for the army. They even produced a short film in 1942 called Hemp for Victory, promoting hemp as a necessary crop to win the war. More atomic bombs have been exploded on these few hundred square miles of desert than on any other spot on the globe. During the Cold War, a secret military project was underway. 
On this project was Army Colonel and Drug Researcher Dr. James S. Ketchum. His objective was to find potential incapacitating agents from LSD, BZ and cannabis derivatives. He succeeded in creating a stronger cannabinoid called EA2233. This breed of ultra-potent cannabis caused effects that lasted for 30 hours and not long after it was tested on human subjects. Dr. James Ketchum in his book Chemical Warfare Secrets Almost Forgotten recounts an interview he did with a test subject and it went as follows. How are you? Pretty good I guess. You got a big grin on your face. Yeah, I don't know what I'm grinning about either. Do things seem funny or is that just something you can't help? <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I just, I just feel like laughing. The subject, unlike the French soldier, seems like an okay dude to blaze with. But, needless to say, the potential use of cannabis in the military proved fruitless. And after a while, the hippies ruined marijuana and the other drugs with their careless hedonism. It took a while for the reputation of cannabis to recover. And in 1970, cannabis was scheduled as a controlled substance with no accepted medical use and a high potential for abuse. It took 26 years for California to legalize medical cannabis in 1996 with the Compassionate Use Act. And now in the 21st century, cannabis has been finally proven by many studies to have quite a few medical benefits, proving that our ancestors were right. And the times are changing and uh, cannabis is no longer demonized, even in the mainstream media. But that should not mean that we should be careless with its use. And now that you know your CBDs, what is your opinion on marijuana? Should it be legalized? Should it be criminalized? Leave your opinion on the comment section down below. And let's end this video on a high note.